NASCAR Heat 5 is finally here and is available on Steam, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. For 50 US dollars for the standard edition, or $70 for the gold edition, which will get you three Tony Stewart paint schemes, including the 2011 Office Depot Championship scheme and his 2016 Homestead Finale scheme. It'll also get you Tony Stewart as a spotter option, a career contract from Stewart Haas Racing, $1.4 million in career mode currency, and the NASCAR Heat 5 season pass, which will bring you four eventual DLC packs. I do have to say thank you to 704 Games for sending me over a copy of NASCAR Heat 5 early, just so I could get my hands on it and spend more time with the game to make a better review for you guys. And although they did send me the game, it does not affect my review of it at all. If anything, I will be judging it more critically because of that. After spending a few solid days playing NASCAR Heat 5, here's my review of it. Before we get started though, if you could, hit that subscribe button down below to help me grow the channel and so you can get notified for when I upload new videos. Also, feel free to check out my other NASCAR Heat content. So for this review, I'm gonna do it a little different. I'll be splitting this review into two different parts. The first part will be a review for those who are new to the NASCAR Heat series, and the second part will be for those who have played the previous games, uh, specifically NASCAR Heat 4, as there's a bit of controversy that I will address as somebody who's played both games for a decent amount of time. 704 Games' NASCAR Heat 5 is the newest game in the NASCAR Heat series. It is the official NASCAR video game and features 34 authentic tracks for single player, two player split screen, and online multiplayer for you and up to 39 other players. Heat 5 includes all of the official teams, cars, and drivers from the NASCAR Cup Series, Xfinity Series, and Gander RV and Outdoor Truck Series, as well as the fictional Dirt Late model series called the Extreme Dirt Tour. The game features an updated career mode, quick race mode, championship mode, challenge mode, split screen, test session mode, and an online multiplayer where you can race with up to 39 other players as well as an all new online challenge mode. In career mode, you can embark on your own journey to the top of the ranks starting from dirt or wherever you want actually, and work your way up to the NASCAR Cup Series. You can create your own driver and get hired to a team or even start your own team where you'll need to buy your own cars and hire and manage your own employees. NASCAR Heat 5 adds more player and car customization options like new fonts for numbers and more statistics over the previous games. Championship mode allows you to pick a series, run a pre-made schedule, including the updated 2020 schedule, or create your own schedule and race your way through the season with the goal of getting that championship status. Challenge mode is a game mode where you'll be presented with specific scenarios generally themed after things that have happened during real races. For example, Kurt Busch defending P1 from his brother Kyle to earn himself a spot in the 2019 playoffs at Kentucky. And there's also some really crazy ones, like surviving the big one at Daytona. Challenge mode has always personally been one of my favorite modes in the NASCAR Heat series, and having some new challenges available is definitely a good thing. Continuing with challenges, there's a new feature to the game called Online Challenges. The current one is themed after the recent Pocono doubleheader from a few weeks ago, where in real life Kevin Harvick won the first race and finished in second the following day to Denny Hamlin. The challenge this time is to win that second race as Kevin Harvick and pull off that double up. When I saw this was the challenge, I was pretty surprised to see how up to date it actually was, as that just happened like a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and I'm interested to see what other challenges they come up with in the future. Upon starting up the game, the game actually required me to change some settings to get it to work right. Personally, I play on PC and I race on this game using a steering wheel. For me, all of the buttons were not mapped correctly and required me to remap them. This immediately presented another issue though. The button to get into the options was also unmapped and required me to plug in an Xbox controller to get to them. If I didn't have that controller available, I would have been completely out of luck. Fortunately, they've just recently released a patch that has remapped the options button and made it accessible for all control types. I should also mention at this point that the game does not recognize a keyboard or mouse as a valid control. Yes, you can navigate the menus with the keyboard, but you cannot actually drive with them. So you will need some sort of controller to play this game on PC. In my review of NASCAR Heat 3, I judged the game on an arcade to sim racing scale system to better explain how this game will feel for somebody who hasn't played it before. A lot of people found that system helpful, so I'll do it again for this one. So if a game like OutRun is a 1, meaning full-on arcade, and Need for Speed is somewhere around a 3, still kind of arcadey, but not too arcadey, and if something like Forza and Gran Turismo are like a 7 or 8, and iRacing is a full-on 10, meaning full sim, this game would be around a 6 or a 6.5. 
Keep in mind, this isn't my total rating of the game. It's just a way to explain what type of racing you'll expect and what the game will feel like for you. NASCAR Heat 5 features a tuning system, drafting system, damage, and all new DNFs where you or an AI can be completely wrecked out of a race. The game also has stuff like oil temps, tire temps, and fuel usage, making it a fairly realistic game feature-wise, but a little more arcadey on the driving side. There are some things that I would have liked to have seen in NASCAR Heat 5 that weren't in the previous games either. Things like manual control over the car during cautions, pit stops, pace laps, and restarts are not in the game, which really takes away from the experience in my opinion. Also when a caution does come out, there is no replay or description of what actually happened during the race, and this can be frustrating when you're door to door with another driver and all of a sudden the game cuts away to a pace lap with no explanation of what happened. That being said, you can possibly see what happened in your post-race replay if it shows it in one of the quick clips, or if you can spectate yourself and it just so happens to be in the shot that you're in. Otherwise, you won't see anything. It would at least be nice to have a spotter tell you what happened or where it happened, and it would also be nice to follow other cars in the post-race replay. I would have also liked to have seen a photo mode in this game. I think photo modes are a cool addition to any game and would fit very well in NASCAR Heat. Besides the NASCAR Cup Series, Xfinity Series, and Truck Series, the game includes the fictional Extreme Dirt Tour. If you're a big fan of dirt racing like I am, don't get too excited. This mode is actually a pretty big miss from what dirt racing actually is. The car is modeled after a dirt late model, yet doesn't really drive like one at all. The NASCAR Heat Series doesn't really have a solid drifting mechanic, uh, especially under dirt, so the car does feel a bit looser than the asphalt cars, but, but still doesn't drive like a dirt car. You don't even have to counter steer the car, and throttle control doesn't matter except for on turn-in, rather than to balance the angle of the car and the grip of the tires. I think this mode was added just as a way to have you be a rookie and work your way up from the ground, rather than just starting off in one of the official NASCAR series, but other than that, it's not really all that fun in my opinion. Apart from the Dirt series, the AI in this game is actually really fun to race against. They've made improvements since the last game, and it's actually very noticeable. In the old games, they would pretty much just stick to one or two lines, and that's about it. They would be very easy to outpace, even on harder difficulties, as long as you adjusted your setup a little bit. In the last two games, I would run with bots on the hardest difficulty and still win a lot of races pretty easily. But in this game, I find that even on lower settings, the bots still have the ability to outrace me if I'm not driving at my best. In NASCAR Heat, the AI can be set from a difficulty range of 85 to 105, and I find the highest setting in this game actually is pretty tough for me. I need to be on my A game with a good setup just to finish in the top 5. Beyond the general difficulty level, there are a few other settings for the AI to better tweak them to your liking. For example, you can change how much they're affected by things like tire wear, how stable their cars are, their chances of recovering from getting loose or turned, how common a malfunction is for them, how compact the restarts are, so if everybody's bumper to bumper or if there's a little space in between, and how wide the skill gap is between the top drivers and the lower level drivers. If you're also a wheel user, the wheel feedback is actually pretty solid on this game. I found it to be too heavy by default, and I had to dial it back quite a bit, but you can feel a lot of road textures and can actually sense where the tires are starting to lose grip. As far as the online in this game goes, it can either be a lot of fun or a complete disaster. I've been in some lobbies that have clean racers who appreciate a good race, but I have also been in lobbies that could pretty much be considered a battle royale. It's honestly just luck if you get in a clean lobby or a lobby filled with trolls and griefers. The game does have a ghosting system that kicks in, but it kinda takes too long and trolls can learn how to avoid it altogether to still hit you. The best solution to this is to host your own lobby and to just kick trolls out as they come in, or to just join a league for the game. You can find some leagues or groups through the official NASCAR Heat Community Discord server. They have a league section in there and a looking for group section. The cool thing about the NASCAR Heat series is that you can actually just kinda go from getting the game to possibly being in the eSports series. Uh, when the eSports is running, they have qualifiers. Uh, it's a couple different qualifiers for you to be able to qualify to get into the actual eSports series. And it's open to everybody, as far as I know. There might be an age restriction, but otherwise it's open to everybody. The only issue with that is it's not on the PC for some reason, which I don't really understand. Uh, I've played the game on console, and I've played the game on PC, and it's virtually identical. When it comes to graphics in this game, they're pretty reasonable. It's nothing to write home about, but they also don't look bad. Personally, I play in 4K on PC with the settings maxed out. For anybody wondering about my PC specs, I have a Ryzen 2600, 16 gigs of RAM, and a GTX 1080. And it can manage this game perfectly fine. The gameplay you're seeing in the background is actually 4K max settings, 
but it's just downscaled to 1080p for YouTube. Heat 5 in 4K looks pretty sharp, and it actually has really nice lighting. There aren't that many settings you can change to customize the graphics, though. On PC, you can only change resolution, quality level, bloom, anti-aliasing, shadows, and replay depth of field. It also has three different V-Sync settings. There's none, which is an unlimited frame rate, as far as I know. Then there's every frame, which is 60, or possibly just matched to your display. I have a 60 hertz monitor, so it runs at 60. And then half, which is 30, or half of what your display's refresh rate is. On top of visuals, the driving camera selections are pretty good, but they did add some that weren't in the previous games. The exterior cameras are very good, so if you prefer exterior cameras to interior cameras, you're all set. I would like to see a roof cam that looks kind of like the one used in real life broadcast, but the current roof camera will do just fine. For me, the issue in this game comes with the cockpit camera. I can't really explain what the problem is with it, but it just feels off. It almost feels like the windshield is actually just a screen inside the car and you're sitting there looking at it. The camera for me is way too zoomed out and it makes it hard to see out of the car and judge the distance. I also find it incredibly difficult to judge the speed of the car from the cockpit camera, which is never a problem you want to have while driving. They do allow you to turn off the steering wheel now inside the car, which is nice, but I would like other adjustments as well. In the future games, I would definitely like to see a seat adjustment so everybody can move the camera to exactly where it would work for them, and on top of that, a field of view slider would be good. The audio in NASCAR Heat 5 is very good. That is, until it starts glitching. For about 75% of the race, the audio works and sounds pretty good. Eventually, the audio will become a choppy mess, and it's very annoying, and it creates a stuttering effect. This also isn't just a PC thing, because I have friends who play on consoles, and they've also experienced it. And it was a problem in NASCAR Heat 4 as well. Now, I've tried to assess this issue with the bit of audio experience that I have. To me, it sounds like the game is failing to handle the audio of your car, the audio of 39 other cars, the spotter, the crowd, and the reverb that comes off the walls. I honestly don't really know what the problem is, but I hope they try to fix it soon in a patch, and at the latest, the next game. Some other bugs in the game include the game crashing after finishing career races, or starting a second season. Uh, there's also some texture issues and probably some others that I'm not aware of. I do know that the game crashing bugs are being worked on right now or may have possibly have been fixed already. I didn't personally experience either the crashing bugs or the texture bugs, but I have seen pictures of them online and discussions of them on Reddit and Twitter. Despite the bugs and the few gripes I have about this game, it's still very fun to play. Overall, there's a good amount of content in the game for the $50 price point, and for the Heat 4 players, I'll address that shortly. Just hang in there real quick. You get pretty much everything you'd expect from a NASCAR video game. You get all the tracks, all the cars, and all the drivers. You get the fictional Dirt series. You get a pretty solid career mode, a 40-person online multiplayer. And the game has decent physics that work for everyone, whether you're new to racing altogether or have been playing racing games for years. The game isn't a simulator, so you can't really expect sim physics from it. I do find that the game has managed to pull off a good balance of arcade and sim elements to make an overall enjoyable racing experience for everyone. Now for the overall rating of the game. I like to review my games on a skip, wait for sale, or buy rating. I feel like this system works better than just a random number that doesn't really mean anything at the end of the day. And this is where the crossroads comes in between new players or veteran NASCAR Heat players. So in this specific case, I'll be giving this game two different ratings. If you don't already own NASCAR Heat 4, NASCAR Heat 5, in my opinion, is a definite buy. It is the best official NASCAR stock car racing game right now that can deliver when it comes to having all the drivers, all the cars, and the tracks to make it an official NASCAR experience. As long as you're comfortable with the few bugs I've mentioned that are probably going to get patched anyway, and don't mind the potential bad field that is the online, then it's a pretty safe purchase. Now for those of you like myself who have played NASCAR Heat 4, there's a lot of controversy around NASCAR Heat 5, primarily around its price tag of $50 or $70 for the Gold Edition. I've spent the past few days really trying to experience everything the game has to offer to determine whether or not I feel it's worth the money. What I've decided is that it really depends on what you want from the game. If you're like me, I primarily stick to single player. If I want to do some online racing, I'll just get on iRacing for that. But the new AI in this game is the best I've seen in a NASCAR game ever. They really find their own grooves, they try different lines, and they don't just stick to the same two spots on the track. They can be aggressive, they decide whether they want to work with you or just try to pass you. They do bump and runs once in a while and push you up into the turn and dive under you. They pressure you. They don't feel quite like real players yet, but they aren't too bad for being AI. To me, that's a pretty big deal. 
And they really shine in a longer race, like a 50% or a 100% race. I also really appreciate having the updated roster. It's cool to see everyone in their new rides. And they also announced that they're going to be adding Indy Road now that the Xfinity Series has raced there. And with them doing that, they may even add Daytona Road at some point since they're going there this season now instead of Watkins Glen. At the end of the day, even though I love the new AI upgrades, the 2020 roster, and the eventual addition of Indy Road, it is hard to justify that $50 price point. And that's a hard thing to say, too, because the game isn't bad. It isn't even worse than Heat 4. It's actually better. It just hasn't added enough to really sell itself. What I would have appreciated was a discount for those who owned Heat 4 to get the game for like $25 to $30 at the most. It does kind of hurt a bit to see things like Kenseth pretty much just looking like Kyle Larson in-game, or even sharing his exact driving style with the infamous Larson line. The game also has loading screens now that are essentially Fnatic ads that are just a little strange to see, but aren't really a big deal to me since NASCAR does pretty much just have 200 mile an hour billboards going around the track. The only new things besides the AI and roster are the testing mode, which is basically just practice without AI, more fonts for numbers, new challenges, some career mode stats, and the championship mode. After assessing all that, my rating for returning players would be a wait. I don't really think it's worth skipping completely unless you exclusively run online races because that's pretty much something that's exactly the same from the last game. But if you can find the game on sale, I would say it's worth picking up. This was a bit of a weird review to make. Typically, I wouldn't give a game two ratings, but in this odd, very specific situation, it really needs it. Usually a game is either good, bad, or just meh, but this game is good, but it does also just feel like an update to the previous game. That being said, I will be playing this game a lot. I do plan on following the entire 2020 and 2021 cup seasons on this game, at least until Heat 6 comes out, as well as doing a career mode playthrough. So if you're looking for some NASCAR Heat content, make sure to subscribe so you get notified for when I upload new videos. Anyways, I know this was a bit of a strange conclusion to a review, but if it helped you out, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button down below. Thanks for watching, everyone. See y'all next time. Peace.